who uh, making um, and is inviting all of Canada to participate, all the churches to have another outreach as a huge net um, knit by all the different churches and believers. And I thought, this is so awesome that we have these tools handed over to us. We will participate. We will be part of the Alpha course in this new year. And we will prepare for that in March and then launch it. And uh, hopefully in two or three different places in the city with uh, different teams and on different evenings so that we can reach out to as many as possible, at least to those we know and we personally invite. And every team will be responsible for that. We have these DVDs running, we have a meal, and we have time for group chats. And as you heard, uh, no question is uh, too, too little or too, too not valuable to be uh, asked there at Alpha. So please start praying. This one group that we also need is prayer people. And I want you to think about signing up for prayer as well. So if you maybe cannot participate in one of those teams, please be the prayer team. Let us do this together as Emmanuel and see to it that many people have a chance to get their questions answered and see how God looks at their brokenness and brings healing to their lives as he has done also for us. Amen? All right, good. So, yeah, like, may God bring it all into place so that it will be really effective. And it will be more or less between just before Easter and the summertime. When I heard those prayers this morning uh, during our worship time, I thought, okay, they all read my scripts, I guess, or something, um, because uh, I really want to draw the attention to some of the points that we repeatedly heard in these prayers. And uh, I want to start with a, a passage that I have mentioned before in a, a couple sermons. And um, we find this passage in Matthew 24, and I read from verse 3. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, there will be famines, earthquakes in various places. And all these are the beginning of the birth pains. In verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. See to it that you are not alarmed. King James translates, don't be troubled. Or the New Living Translation, don't panic. This word trouble means when literally translated from the Greek, to cry aloud, to make a noise by outcry, to be troubled in mind, to be frightened alarmed. So Jesus is saying in the context of the end time teachings here from Matthew 24 and 25 and parallel um, also found in the other gospels, 
Don't be troubled. Don't be frightened. Or even don't cry. St. Paul also uses this word when teaching about the end times. He writes, Do not be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter. In a full sentence from Jesus' teaching one more time, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you're not alarmed. This all must happen. Instead, when these things begin to take place, stand up, And lift up your heads. Other translations, translations say, straighten yourselves up. And raise your heads. Because your redemption is drawing near. In other words, help is on its way. Help is on its way. What do we usually do if we are faced with challenges or depressing things in our lives? Some sit down. Some don't even get out of their beds. They do an all-day slumber party. We worry. We trouble. We are troubled. We, we, we are without, without any hope. When the challenge is severe, we look down. But Jesus says, look up. What is up there? God is up there. Sitting on his throne, God, he is not nervous nor troubled at any time. But in control of everything. He is the sovereign. And not in any way anxious, concerned, or in distress. Why? Because he is, Isaiah says, the creator of the heavens. There it is. Who stretches them out. Who spreads out the earth with all the sp that springs from it. Who gives breath to its people. That's by the way you and I. And life to those who walk on it. Look up. Don't be afraid. Do not be troubled. Don't cry. Please don't cry. Raise your head and look up. In all our discernment of our situation, in all our personal view of things, we have to take into account the almighty, the all-powerful, sovereign Lord. This is what the prophets were doing in the Old and the preachers in the New Testament. All the way up to our present age. They are called to draw the attention to the one who holds it all into place and who is in no way concerned about anything. Why? Isaiah is answering this one with a counter question. Who else has held the oceans in his hand. Who has measured off the heavens with his fingers. I don't know. Um, if you go in the home hardware store. Uh, or uh, home depot. And you forgot your measurements. I don't know how you work that then. You got to have like three, three foot. Right? Like th three feet of whatever. Right? So, or maybe only ten inches or something. How do you measure that? I, I'm lucky, and I was told um, 
when I first started a home hardware way back, <laughs> fresh off the boat, the owner of the store came to me. Look at your shoes. I said, okay. And I was like afraid of him. He was like tough. And he said, take a measuring stick and, and tell me how how big your shoes are. I checked it out. I said, it's, it's 12. That's awesome, he said. You're so lucky. And I said, why? Because it's a foot. You don't have to have a measuring tape along any anytime. You just go for it. One, two, three, that's it. So easy. God is measuring the heavens with his fingers. Mm. Okay. Maybe two, maybe three fingers. I don't know how he does it. Probably just two. Who else knows the weight of the earth or has weighed the mountains and hills on the scale? Who is able to advise the spirit of the Lord? Who knows enough to give him advice or teach him? Has the Lord ever needed anyone's advice? Does he need instruction about what is good? Did someone teach him what is right or show him the path of justice? No, for all the nations of the world are but a drop in the bucket. That was James' prayer. They are nothing more than dust on the scales. He picks up the whole earth as though it were a grain of sand. Did you ever grab a grain of sand? Similar to, to getting a splinter out of your finger, right? That's you, I, I need those ones now. Otherwise, it's just whatever is there, it bugs me. I can't see it, you know? So I need glasses now. God just picks up the whole earth as if it is only just a grain of sand. Just think about God for a moment. Allow this thought... Even though it does not make sense to you. Let the word has its own power in saturating you about the greatness of our God. There is no other. Who else? Even though God is all powerful. Superior above all, still in his sovereignty, our creator is in no way arrogant or ignorant to the present situation of the human race. Paul says, he's not far from us. We breathe him. That's how close God is. He's not just ignorant and just sitting somewhere on his throne, far away. But by his spirit, he's right here with us. Understanding where we are at this present age, in this time, in these end times, he knows. And never in any way has been Ignorant. He knows the times we're living in and still is fully in control over everything. He could say, as some have thought about him, yeah, I'm maybe the creator of all, but then I don't care about my creation anymore. There are religions thinking that. He created everything, but then he just left us. No, he is a God who is not only all powerful, but also a God who cares. He cares. While he's still 
proceeds with his master plan. He is not ignorant to the present situation of the human race. He is in control even now as we are now living at the end of times. And he at the same time is also not ignorant either to the situation you and I are personally presently in at the same time. Got it all under control with a caring heart, also caring for you and for me. Because at the same time as God is displaying his might before in our eyes with these prophecies we just looked at from the Bible, he also stresses this fact that he is caring, he is loving. Isaiah lets the Almighty continue to speak through him to us. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. And listen to this. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place, and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. God does not leave us in the dark. He's telling us what he's about to do. And he does this all with an extremely loving and caring heart. And before he explains his greatness by comparing all nations of the earth with just a tiny drop on a bucket, he first shows us his true heart. He says right in that chapter, in that same message from Isaiah, comfort, comfort my people. Says our God, speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her, and Jerusalem and Israel, when you hear that, think about you yourself believing in God. Because those who believe in God, in Jesus Christ, are his own. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone. And her sins are pardoned. Because every time we, we, we think about this almighty God... And also, the caring God, we kind of think, yeah, but, yeah, of course, he's caring and loving, but uh, I'm sinful. Yeah. God knows. He knows that that is a problem. That is the problem. And that's why he is caring. Because we are not able to care for ourselves or even in a bit of a second can believe that we will be able to protect this earth and keep the balance of all the dynamics of the nations. And still in all of this, we fail to consider a spiritual realm that God is talking about as well. Salvation is not found in us. Help is on its way. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm. See, he brings his reward 
with him as he comes. He will feed his flock, those who belong to him, like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. Coming back to the present times, which have been revealing for a while now, at least to some of us here in this present time, signs of the end times we have observed while watching the news. In various places, wars. Well, it's not too close, so I can ignore that. But it's hard to ignore because we all talk about it. Jesus says, For many will come in my name claim, I, claiming I am the Messiah. I am, that means I am the Savior. I can save you. We just heard it. I will make You great again, America. And maybe it is so. Or maybe it's not. But the one who has just said that two days ago is surely not the Messiah. Hello. And that is clear to us all. Don't set your hope in people. Don't be in panic because of people either. People will come and claim, I will save you. But instead, they will deceive many, Jesus says. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars. All these signs that we see. Nations will go to war against nations. Kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. Like when we can maybe deal with famine and I think we are just not capable because of our selfishness we still cannot deal with earthquakes like it or not we blame all sorts of others because of that and that you know and then they still come unexpected and people die Jesus says hey these are just some signs Of the end of times. These are just some signs. Christians. People who believe in Jesus Christ. The son of God will be arrested. Persecuted and killed. They will be hated all over the world. Because they are his followers. And then there will be many. Who will turn away from Jesus. And betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many. Sin will be rampant, will flourish everywhere. And the love of many will grow cold. But Jesus declaring to those who belong to him, don't panic. Don't be troubled. Do not cry. Don't be misled. Into warring. Were you misled? And are you warring right now? You were misled if you're warring. If you're troubled, you were misled. If you're in panic over the things that happen all over the world, somebody misled you. That's what Jesus is saying. Because you should not be troubled. There should not be any panic in you. Instead, Believe. Trust. You believers need to stay calm. You need to rest in the unfailing love of the almighty, all-powerful creator God. All-controlling ruler of everything. Rest in him. Who is to those who trust in him. That means believe in the salvation work of Jesus Christ. Son, with certainty 
of the forgiveness of their sins, believing that Jesus already paid the price on the cross for all their trespasses. Those who trust in him, a loving God, a caring shepherd, he is a protector and he is a provider. And remember, in all of this developing unrest in this world today, first, the good news of a loving God who saves needs to be spread throughout the whole world. That is God's real intention, true intention. His longing is that everyone would be saved and would understand the truth. Not just us, but also them. For, so the teacher of the New Testament, St. Paul, continues on in his letter to the student, Timothy, there is only one God. And there is only one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time. And if you think this is a dark world, then I say this is just the right time for good news. Who wants some good news? You and I, we will spread good news. The good news will be preached to all nations. That is our focus. And that first. The good news will be preached to all nations. Not, oh, what will come next? Oh, do not be shaken. Are you shaken? Because of fear? Do not. Look up. So dear friend, think about a loving and caring God. An almighty, all-powerful, sovereign God. And everything because of Him will fall into place according to His plan. Despite the chaos and the uproar in this world today, yes, as we prayed, we don't understand it all. There are so many things. Why is an all-powerful God allowing all of this? That does not bring you into faith. That, brings, that question brings you into more fear and resentment. But I'm a witness. I can tell you God is loving. This is my personal message. This is how I want to spread the good news. I don't understand it all, but he is loving and kind to me. He cares for me. In the morning when I get up and I'm, I'm uncertain, I'm a little afraid. Sometimes I don't even know why. Just getting up, is there any meeting? No, there's, what's going on with me? What's going on with you, my soul? Trust in your kind and loving God. Let this fear fizz away as soon as God's love enters in. Don't doubt. Trust Him. So dear friend, you're also invited to put your trust in Him. Don't be alarmed. Don't be troubled. Don't be afraid about life anymore. Don't start crying. Don't panic. Instead, look up. Look up to God in Jesus Christ and let His peace rule in your heart. The one who is in control over everything is also taking good and loving care of you 
in your daily problems. Because even though you might have switched off all the news and you don't care about what's happening anymore and you have decided for yourself, I take one day at a time. It's still not right to sign out out of this life today because you're still here. You're still here. You cannot just sign out and say, it's not, I don't care anymore. Be like your father, your heavenly father. Care. Love. Seek. The Holy Spirit, the lost in this world. And Jesus says to those who have made him the leader of their lives, with the words that he spoke to his followers already 2,000 years ago, and more valid today than ever. I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothes? Look at the birds. Look at creation. Look at these creatures. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? Don't let them deceive you. I'm defender of animal rights. But don't let them, the animal rights come before human rights, please. Or more important than human rights. Don't let them twist you and mess you up. Don't be misled. Trust the Lord. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? This morning in closing of the service, I would like to pray a prayer with you all. I hope you will make it your own personal prayer. It's a prayer of faith, of trust in the one who is like a shepherd to us. And if it's possible, maybe we stand up together to pray this prayer. It's a very familiar prayer. It's a Psalm 23. Make it your own psalm this morning. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Do you believe it? Do you believe him? And then I encourage us all today not to trouble, be troubled or to cry. Stop crying. Look up and believe. 